In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, David meets with Orlissa Ortiz to talk about the evolution of items through the franchise's history. Welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am your host, David Geisler, here today with with an old friend almost. Yes. Alyssa, how are you? I'm very good. How are you doing? Alyssa Ortiz. Ortiz, yes. Yes. So I have dyslexia and I accidentally put you in as my contact list for a year as Oritz. <laughs> Oritz. And I think I've referred to you as Alyssa Oritz on the show. I'm so oh. sorry. <laughs> like in <laughs> season <you>? two? <laughs> Yeah. Probably. No, it's okay. Yeah, Alyssa Ortiz from work. <laughs> Alyssa from work. <laughs> Alyssa from work. I love it. I love it. So some of our listeners might know you from our episode in season two, which was, was it top 10 mo- favorite or was it favorite emotional storylines? I think it was favorite emotional storylines. You yeah. know what? I just realized, I think we did it as a top 10 because it was you, Nick, and I, and we each yeah. picked three. Yeah, yeah. And then we had the listener feedback kind of be the 10th. The 10th. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. That, was, that was a good one. That was a good one. Pulling my mic in here. There we go. Sorry, <laughs> listeners, for the noises. We had one comment from a listener that was like, why are you always bumping your mics? Oh. <laughs> and we're a little fast and loose with this podcast. I've made other mm. podcasts that are a little bit more professional. I've made some that are a lot more kind of uh, indie. I kind of, right. I don't mind this podcast being kind of in the middle. Yeah, I like it. I like this very more comfortable, especially me. I'm such an introvert. You make it very comfortable. It's just like we're just chilling here. Exactly. And we're just having a conversation. And it's what I really like about the podcast. Too. Well, this time around, you have the added stress of the camera over there. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay? there's a camera. Hi, camera. <laughs> so Magical Story people from our top tier Patreon people, they get the video version, our behind the scenes video version of these okay. episodes. I made my hair look a little poofy. It's all good. It's wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. It's Fabulous. a great look. It's a great look. <laughs> and, um, um, but but they also understand that once we get rolling here, you know, we can no, kind of yeah. it's we can kind of just like, pretend the camera's not there and it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so Alyssa, Alyssa, uh, yeah, that was a great time that that, that episode lap back in season two. Uh, favorite yep. emotional no top ten emotional storylines. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of listener feedback from that one through the mm-hmm. next couple episodes. Oh yeah. People really enjoyed it. Yeah, I heard a, I heard a few things about it. People at work saying I heard. I was like, oh, <gasps> yeah. So it's kind of <laughs> happy. So we yeah we do work together mm-hmm. and. Um, it's kind of, there are people that are starting to listen, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's fun. Um, when uh, when the episode I was in last season came out, um, Giannis, my, oh, yeah, sure. he's like, I heard, I was like, what do you hear? And he's like, you're on a podcast with David. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I watched, I listened to it. I'm, I'm really shaky in the beginning. And he's like, it's okay. It's okay to have nerves. And I'm like, I, okay. <laughs> That's very, that's very, I feel like you're doing a very good uh, uh, depiction. Oh, Yanni, yeah, I love him. <laughs> so uh, today what we're going to do is, and this was your idea, Alyssa. So with mm-hmm. with these first, full disclosure, the first three or four episodes of season three here, as many of our listeners now know from our kind of special message that I put out there, these first three or four episodes, we had to really quickly come up with some ideas. Yes. And I'm very grateful to you and then Dan from the first episode Shane's kicking in for episode three. I'm literally driving up to like Two Rivers, Wisconsin to meet him in four days to Exciting. record episode three. We're, we're scrambling a little bit, but in this first bit mm-hmm. as we kind of design the rest of the season. Great. So as we go, um, we're going to, we're certainly going to have you back in the season, but you're kind of, mm-hmm. you got in here quickly for me and I appreciate yeah, it so much. Of course. And so when we were talking about topics, mm-hmm. you actually had a great idea and mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew it or not, but it's a little bit of a follow up or even a sequel episode to, we had an evolution of art styles episode back mm-hmm. in season one. And so what was the, so I reached out to you and you, what did you say? (laughs) So um, it's kind of funny because we were, we were trying to decide on topics. I couldn't decide on topics. I was literally watching um, your playthrough of one of the dungeons of A Link to the Past. Oh, yeah. And um, the, there was, um, what is it called? That one enemy that stands still just kind of shoots you with the eyes. The laser eye thing. I the know. laser There's eye thing. There's a name. We can check yeah. the encyclopedia. Yeah, but. we have the encyclopedias. <laughs> yeah. So I was um, just thinking of how that evolved in, in into like um in ocarina of time it's basically the same thing but the mechanics are a little different and well, you can blow them up with bombs and you could blow them yeah. up with bombs i was just thinking about that and i was just thinking oh why don't we do like the evolution of something and then uh we decided on the evolution of items which i think is a good one yeah i love it i love <laughs> it so this is i guess it's not really a favorites episode it's not a top 10 it's a little bit of a what i would consider a deep dive episode if we had to put it in one of our playlists yeah so i do like category playlists on youtube and stuff like that cool. and um 
we have not seen each other's notes. No. <laughs> and I think we might probably have plenty of doubles, and that's fine. Probably. And I think that'll be great. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. The evolution of items. In other words, uh, um, an item. Oh, and full disclosure, my show notes, I essentially mm-hmm. dug into my Zelda encyclopedia, <laughs> which I have here, and I think you have yours with you yeah. as well. <laughs> Nerd. Oh, my goodness. The best Nerds. kind. I love it. I love it. Yes. So I basically went through my Zelda encyclopedia into the items section, and any time I saw many entries of an item, I was like, boom, write it down. Good. You yeah. know what I mean? Basically, I was looking through, and I was just kind of like, what What can I actually talk about? Because, you know, I haven't played all the games, but I do know enough yeah. um, to know which ones have changed or have played a major part later on where in the beginning it did not. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. So I'm excited to talk about that. And I think some of these are items that you get in dungeons that you use. I have a couple mm-hmm. items that are just kind of accessory items. I even have a couple um almost not shout outs, but like honorable mentions. Okay, cool. Where there's like not exactly a lot of evolution, but just it's interesting that they show up again. Cool, because I think I only have like seven items. Oh no, that's fine. But a few of them like I could really talk about. That's kind of like where <laughs> I'm at too. That's fine. That's fine. Let's um I, I I have some listener feedback. Awesome. I wanted to read one here. Um that was from kind of one of our super fans. I think she's also a magical sword people. Ooh, perfect. <laughs> um, Pinky people. Becca, she speaks with us often on many different sources. And she said here real quick, this is so, and, and I don't want to talk about this too much in our episodes, but I will, I do want to acknowledge, um, I was very nervous for the first episode of season three to come out. Yeah. Uh, just with the context of the whole thing. I didn't want to, I was really nervous. Is the show going to change too much and stuff like that, you know? Right. And um, it was really overwhelming the love and support that we actually got from our listeners we got mm-hmm. a tremendous amount of feedback saying love to kate you know kate will be missed yeah. like family first of course. and and then also saying excited for the guests excited for yes. and you guys aren't even guests now you're <laughs> now you're just becoming part of like the cast or whatever and we're going to rotate through i know mm-hmm. for a fact you're going to be back on for like another three episodes because we're probably going to do one of these like record three episode days yeah you know definitely do the rest of the season i Literally this morning, just listened to episode one of season three. Got it. And I'm saying even though it was a little different, it was still you guys. You guys just it was it was good. It was really good. I really appreciated it. The commercials were hilarious, <laughs> and some of those I had never even seen before. Some so. I had not seen. Yeah. And I actually have found some since. Maybe we have to do a follow up one a little bit later too, because be there's fun. definitely some others too. There's like a weird Majora's Mask one and everything mm-hmm. like that. Um, so that was a real pleasure. It was really it really. The, the the support that I got from all of you guys who were kind of our periphery mm-hmm. AZP family and then the listeners was really exciting. So I did want to read at least one here from Becca, even though we did get many, many tweets and th- messages on Patreon, which That's good. really, I got to say, like really relaxed me and made me really grateful yeah, for, for these it's listeners. Exciting. It's, it's good. You have a great support system. I will miss Kate all through season three, but I'm really excited that we're kind of all coming together here. So. Yeah. It says, she says here, hi guys, I wanted to reach upon hearing, I wanted to reach out upon hearing the news about Kate's family and leave uh, and express how sorry I am to hear that she's, how she has been and continues to be going through so much. Kate, you are in my thoughts and I hope you find peace at this time with your family. Heart emoji. I wanted to send support and encouragement to everyone else as well. The AZP family (laughs) truly is and feels like exactly that, a family. I am forever grateful to you guys for getting me through some very hard times myself. Kate will be missed so much, of course, but I'm excited for season three. Episode one with Dan was great, and I know David is going to do a wonderful job as always. Looking forward to the other guest spots as well. Long story short, <laughs> thanks for all you do. Another heart emoji. And I think that that kind of, well, kind of aggregates what many of the things that we've been hearing, and it was really, really wonderful. That's great. An absolute pleasure. I think we're not going to de- dive too deep into listener feedback today, but there are a couple. We haven't done iTunes reviews in a long, long time, That's and our, we all of a sudden got many of them. Awesome. And so I have maybe like four here I might read, and then we'll move on. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. I love listening to the feedback. Well, the iTunes reviews are really helpful because they every time you get a review, it actually ups your status a little bit in the right. searches in iTunes, and so I'm very, very grateful. So let's now there are many here. There's like eight or nine we're not i won't read all of them we'll just you know read those in the next episode with shane in a couple days but i'll start here back in january january 16th um uh n135475 said (laughs) so many memories and uh this this individual says just found this podcast today got 30 minutes in and had to subscribe i recently got my eight-year-old into the series and he is absolutely loving this podcast keep up the awesome content for anyone reading this review all i have to say is hey listen 
You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. N135475. Uh, another one here back in on January January 21st, because you know we were down for these these months. Yeah. Um uh K Newt or Can Newt, Can Newt said, Love it. I have always been a huge Zelda fan, but none of my friends growing up were interested in talking Zelda all the time. So it's great to have you guys to listen to. I love the topics and can't wait for season three. I've listened to all of the titles that jumped out to me. Now I'm going back to listen to the ones I haven't yet to, to kill time until then. Fair enough. Thank oh, you so much for nice. digging into our library. Uh, also, I love the creation videos you make, like Zelda 64. And then I also did the Hyrule Fantasy. I, I, I don't know which, what it will be this season. I'm thinking maybe Wind Waker would be interesting because it had such a strange development cycle. Oh, yeah. But... Um, I really hope you get 8-Bit Music Theory on this next season. Thank you, guys. Yes, we were communicating with 8-Bit, and actually I was about to meet up with him in Minneapolis um, for a convention recently, but then things fell through. We couldn't get the schedules quite right. But he lives in Canada, and it's a personal goal of mine to do an episode with him, and I think he's just a brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, Okay, January 26th, Seafink said, Awesome podcast. On your Top 10 Shrine episodes... On your Top 10 Shrines episode, which was in Season 2, Top 10 Shrines was Season 1 with Lizzie Alston. That was the first time we had an actual guest on the show, was Lizzie. Um, uh, On your Top 10 Shrines episode, the red giveaway is not the only time that Breath of the Wild lies to you. Maybe you recall, maybe you don't, Alyssa, but on that episode, we were talking about how one of the shrines is called the the red giveaway. Mm -hmm. And you know how when you use your magnesis, Mm -hmm. um, things that can be picked up turn red. Turn red, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a kind of a hidden lie quote unquote in there where one of the walls looks normal Mm -hmm. but if you turn magnesis on it glows red and you can pull the the wall Mm -hmm. tile away as you may or may not recall um apparently there's more uh lies to you in the shrine by the highland stable called metal doors open the way there is a block that looks like concrete but is actually metal that you pull out to get a chest Love your podcast. I got to go back and check that out. Makes you want to re- revisit when you hear some people Heck talk yeah. about stuff like that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. I think we're going to just do two more. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Thank you from NYC. This is Ju- Judy, Judy-ism, J-U-D-Y-I-S-M. Judy-ism. Um, <laughs> Over uh, January 29th, said, I've been listening for a while. I just want to say thank you so much. Zelda is my calm escape from the real, quote unquote, world. I live in New York, and it's so nice to listen to you guys when I'm walking amongst the crazy crowds, commuting to and from, etc. I It probably sounds crazy that a rando person from across the country loves hearing you two talk about a video game, but it's true. I love, love, love it. It's such a gift. Y'all are my happy place for real. Heart emoji, smiley face, heart emoji. <laughs> Judaism, our pleasure, our pleasure. That's crazy. I love it when we get these where they talk about like when and how they listen to the show, these listeners. That's awesome. There was one gentleman who was like, I listen to it at work all day or Mm -hmm. you don't have to do the monotonous things. It's, we love hanging out with you. Thank you so much. And I think this is the last one we'll do. Um, This is adorable. I love this. Uh, Over February 1st now, the, the individual put their actual iTunes name down as it's a secret to everybody. Super cool. Cool. (laughs) <laughs> Super cool. So it's a secret to everybody says best Zelda podcast I've heard yet is the title of the review <laughs> exclamation point. Great show. Great for anyone who is interested in Zelda games. I'm only 11 and I'm loving it. Five stars. <laughs> also, please shout me out. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Absolutely. It's a secret to everybody. Our pleasure. Thank you for the review That's awesome. and the rating. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Isn't that great? <laughs> So it looks like one, two, three, four, five more, which I'll do Ooh. with Shane. I'll do with Shane in the next nice. episode. Oh my gosh, that is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That's great. So, Alyssa. Yes. Items. How did you approach this exactly? Um, <laughs> I. Like, what's an item to you? Well, an item to me, is something that uh, you can you use basically. Yeah. I a lot all the items I have listed is something you use, and um, I kind of. Just thought of um, from when I was playing A Link to the Past or watching you go through dungeons, things that I was just like, oh, that turned into this or that evolved into this. Or like it's either it evolved or the uses for it evolved. Mm -hmm. Or um, yeah, basically, that's kind of like how I was thinking. So I'm sure we'll talk about this, but it's really Mm -hmm. interesting how like the boomerangs kind of change throughout the games and what they mm-hmm. do. Um, the, the claw shots or the hook shots kind of change. Yes. And I'm sure we'll talk about all of that. Mm-hmm. I, I thought this was great when you came up with this idea. So I'm pulling up my notes, but do you have one you'd like to start with? 
Yeah, I thought it would be fun to start with uh, flutes and ocarinas. Oh my gosh, I don't have this. Yes, let's do it. Yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> so um, the first, let me see. The first time you see a flute, I think it's a link to the past. I could be wrong. You guys can correct me for that. I think um, it is. Ooh. You use the flute to, uh, I believe, to navigate. Wait, Alyssa. There's a flute in the first game. Is there? Yeah, but I don't remember what it does exactly. I think it, it might even teleport you. You know what? It's been a long time. You're going to check double it out? Check. You yeah. know what? I can double check because I have it right here. <laughs> I tell you what. Um, what? Yeah, there's a. I think there's a flute in the very first game. I, I'm starting to remember this. And Page 96. 96. She's going to 96. <laughs> well, it says instruments on uh, music, so... Is there a Legend of Zelda flute right over here, maybe? Ah, Link's Awakening. And there's a... Is that really the first time? There's a fluke. Yeah, there's a flute. All right. That's fine, that's fine. Link's Awakening, Ocarina. Yeah, so basically, from the one I remember first is from a link, uh, link to the Past. Yeah. Where you use the flute and it's with an owl, I believe some kind of bird picks you up and takes you to different spots. Yeah, so, it's like the warp thing. I yeah. now know because the season two <laughs> finale finally played the game. Yes, which was fun. Um, and then I was going to go to basically uh, Ocarina. So Ocarina of Time, obviously. You move on. It moves from like flute to travel. And then the Ocarina of Time, ha in Ocarina of Time, obviously, has like a greater purpose mm -hmm. in the whole game. Um, but also it different songs make you do makes different things happen you can make right. it rain you can make it you can make um whatchamacallit we can change the time of day change the time of day call your horse yeah. um what else we got here well there's what, so many uh, songs in ocarina of time yes it's true <laughs> I mean, it's one thing that i learned in our zelda 64 episode mm -hmm. when i was doing research for that episode is that originally the, the ocarina wasn't going to be as important. Maybe no, they yeah. use it for like one little thing or something. Mm -hmm. Because originally the medallions that, that you get on your pause menu after you def uh, defeat a temple, uh, complete a temple, <laughs> complete a temple yeah. apparently or allegedly those were going to be items that you could put on your C buttons and do certain actions like oh. change the time of day, change the weather, call your horse. But um, there was a t point in development where they switched it over and they said, let's put all of this on the ocarina. And I.J. Numa, uh -huh. who was not the lead director at the time, but was one of the trifecta, it was a Numa, uh, Kazumi, and Miyamoto, um, said that they picked the ocarina because it kind of the Nintendo 64 controller kind of looked like an ocarina to them. Yes, <laughs> and I'll show you my ocarina. Do you want to bring it out right now? Do you want me to show me? Yeah, no, I know this is for audio, but but um, Alyssa came today with a special box. <laughs> and I know we're doing this on the main show. Our patrons can see, yeah. but... If you if you go to any convention, you will find the flute lady. She has all the ocarinas. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So I got the blind box, which is like, you can get a small ocarina up to the most expensive ocarina. Oh, you don't know what's in the box? Uh, I know now, but when I first <laughs> got it, I didn't know. Blind but, box. Well, blind box, yeah. So Interesting. So I got the most expensive ocarina <gasps> you can get. I see so. I see a... A pretty so, large looking box here. Yeah. So we can start with the small one. This oh one's really cute. So we're pulling out something round. Do not round. ask me to play. I don't have time to learn. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna ask you. So I'm, I see a little round thing. Oh wow! That's Interesting. Really cute little ocarina. So I'm holding what looks like a little hockey puck here, um, and it has kind of the large and small holes, and it looks like there might be some thumb holes on the bottom. But it's a complete. It's a circle. It's like a hockey puck. It doesn't yeah. look like the ocarina in the game. Yeah. They have all different types of small ones you can get. But the, I would say that the holes look like they're in similar orientations and sizes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then this is um, the most... Now you're pulling out yeah. an actual blue with a Legend of Zelda logo mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Oh, my god. It's gosh. amazing. And um, it's, I think, I don't forget how many holes. But basically, um, the more holes it has, the more complicated it is, obviously. I've tried to make a sound out of it. Um somewhat successfully yeah. but there's a whole book online you can look up and it shows you exactly how to play it yeah i'm holding right now an actual blue ocarina there are many i would say three times as many holes on this one as mm -hmm. that little hockey puck one you just showed me yeah 
Um, this looks like the one from the game, just maybe mm-hmm. with a few more holes on it. Super cool. Yeah, so they have different versions oh, of gosh. that. Basically, the the more holes, the it's like the more complicated and also the most expensive. Another, another so, thing that's interesting is I look at both of these. It looks like the hole you blow through is like a slit, not a hole. It's a slit, yeah. Isn't that I strange? Was, I was surprised to learn that. I never looked at an ocarina before until mm-hmm. I saw the flute lady. They were literally, the flute lady was literally just um, playing um, one of the songs from Legend of Zelda. Sure. And I was like... I need to go check out that booth. So, oh my gosh, I got me the coolest. Now, this was not. Was this just at C two E two this past weekend? This was, was last year back? at Wizard World, the Comic Con Wizard Edition. Got it. One. Yeah. In we August. should. We maybe let's tell our listeners real quick about the plan that we actually had for this weekend. You, were, we're going to do a bonus episode right after after this. Um, um, for the uh, for our middle tier patrons, yes. but you went to C two E two here in Chicago just a few days ago. Yeah. And originally I was going to go with, and then I got scheduled. I had some stuff come up at work that I had to do, and I was very very disappointed about that. Mm. But we were going to walk around with a little camera and try to shoot some videos for our YouTube page, which is still a great idea. I was thinking maybe in Wizard World I'll get like an actual video camera, and you know, because that's that's a great idea. Well, I mean, I'll <laughs> join you. I'll for and maybe sure. we can. And Dan from episode one, I actually texted him. He was going to be our cameraman. I don't even know if you know this. <laughs> no, he was going to come with me to C two E two to meet up with you and your boyfriend. <laughs> that's great. And he was going to be our cameraman, so that you and I could run around and try to find Zelda cosplay. And it all fell apart because I had to work. Wizard World's in August. We can we can plan. Let's it. set it up. So I have been I have been kind of clear with our listeners that I don't think we're gonna like really have too many booths at conventions this year. I want to mm-hmm. focus more on meetups and maybe yes. going to conventions and creating videos for our YouTube page. I think mm-hmm. that's gonna be my focus this year. That sounds great. Oh, so we still gotta do this. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, that ocarina was amazing. Yeah. So yeah, the ocarina in. Mm-hmm. Ocarina of Time. Yeah. So then you in... Do plenty of things. Yeah. And in, teleport you. And teleport. And then in Majora's Mask, it kind of has a similar kind of thing. Um, I, I just like that when um, Link is a Deku scrub, he's got the trumpets. Yes. So it's like, for still, they're not going to make him have like a little wooden ocarina, which they have wooden ocarina is also, really? which is really cool. Um, they meaning like the world, the real world, just they Yeah. Exist. Yeah. They could have no. just had like, you know, a little f- wooden flute, but they decided on trumpets <laughs> yeah. that come out of his back out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. To, to do the songs. Um, and then, of course, as the Goron, it's the drums, and then the yeah. uh, Zora, it's a guitar, I believe, isn't that I right? I love the guitar. <laughs> it was a badass guitar. Okay, so I want that guitar in person if someone can make that for me. It's that made out of fish great. bones, I think, isn't that right? <laughs> it looks so killer cool. Yeah. Like, I want to be a guitarist like that. It was pretty pretty decent. Um, when you move on from those games, then you go to Wind Waker, and it still has, like, the whole musical thing to control the wind. Yeah. But you're not playing an instrument. You're literally controlling the wind to create the melody with the wind waker wand. Yes, with the actual wand. So you're conducting. You're conducting <clears throat> the wind. And if I may, just a little bit of an honorable mention, mm-hmm. the Oracle games also have an ocarina then as well. Whereas okay. I think Link's Awakening doesn't, but the two Oracles. And I think you basically just use it to, to travel around. Right, in yeah. In the Oracle games, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. So Wind Waker is interesting because that conductor thing, I guess it's, I would cons- mechanically... He doesn't actually play an instrument, does he? He just no. conducts. He just conducts the wind. Um, I played Wind Waker first on GameCube, yeah. and it, it was pretty easy to use. Um, I like that if, like, with one of the buttons, you can control the pitch, so I made it sound really weird. Yeah, yeah. So that was really fun. But yeah, he doesn't really play an instrument, but the wind is the instrument, which I thought was pretty cool evolution mm-hmm. from how they use that music, um, from the ocarina, the flute to ocarina to many instruments in Majora's Mask, up to like the stick in the Wind Waker. I love it. And <laughs> a little wand. fun fact about that, that baton or that wand. The wand. The, what's, when you conduct, I what think, is that called? I think it's called a baton. I think when you actually conduct. they call it in the game the Wind Waker wand. The wand? That's what Fair they enough. call it, yeah. Um, they, when they were designing the Wind Waker, uh, Nintendo was experimenting with peripherals. Mm. And... Um, they kind of hit, they were like at the time they were like well we got we have these accelerometers that can tell if you're tilting something and there was going to be a GameCube wand that you would hold oh my to go God. up down <laughs> left and right with um, uh, and they were developing it and you were going to plug it into your GameCube and use it to conduct that'd be very interesting what it was and they ended up just mapping it to the C stick you know but what that was is that was the technology that eventually hmm. went into the Wiimotes the Wiimotes yeah <laughs> your, your so, best friends <laughs> <laughs> So, and then they brought that into Twilight Princess, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a second with the pitching with the wolf howls. Mm-hmm. 
But originally, Wind Waker was going to have their own version of a Wiimote before the Wiimotes existed. Oh, wow. And that was kind of a predecessor to what ended up becoming the Wii. And so that was the conductor. So anyway, so we go from Wind Waker to, mm-hmm. according to your notes, is it Twilight Princess next? It's uh, Spirit Flute, which I figured you might know about this. I don't. It says Spirit, Spirit Flute. Flute. What game is that in? Double, it says Twilight Princess on my notes. Let me double check. Spirit Flute? I mean, you. Yeah, there's a, something. The closest thing to an instrument oh, is you blow that. into those plants in Twilight Princess. Oh, yeah, the plants, the little whistles. Yeah. The whistle plant. I'll confess, I love Twilight Princess, but I'll confess I was a little disappointed that the, all the Ocarina stuff got offloaded to weird plants on the ground in Twilight Princess. Like, you can only call your horse where the oh, no, that's horse a, plant is. Sorry, my mistake. What's up? Um, Twilight Princess is the howling. Right. And. What up here, teach? No, it's just the howling to get through. So basically for the whole, um, for Twilight Princess's howling, it was Spirit Tracks that has a spirit flute. Yeah. And then Skyward Sword, you have the harp. So, right. So every single one of these musical instruments is a bit, bit of a play on the controller. Yeah. They have fun with that. The Nintendo 64 controller kind of looked like an ocarina, so they went for it. And actually, if you think about pushing the buttons, the, the layouts kind of emulates an ocarina very, very abstractly, but it does. Then we go to the C stick on the GameCube, which is a bit like a bat- about as close as you're going to get to a baton on the GameCube controller with that weird C nub sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> and then we go to essentially the Wii, where you can use the actual. They actually have a wand now to go up and up down, and, down. and that controlled uh, Link's wolf, Wolf Link's head, of course, for the tone. Oh yeah, yeah. And then in um, you said the Spirit Flute is in Spirit Tracks, right? Spirit Tracks, yeah. So what they do there is you actually hold your pen down and you mm-hmm. move the flute back and forth it's like a pan flute yeah it's one it's the yeah it's the one with it's like all like multiple flutes side by side yes gotcha. and so to play those in real life you just move back and forth yeah right. uh-huh. and so you so they got very clever with this and on the ds of course you blow into the microphone and move that that pan flute back and forth on your touch screen and that's how you play it so each one of these instruments always kind of plays off of the controller last but not least of course Sky, skyward sword as you were saying um, that's when they finally had Wii Motion Plus, and they could mm. actually calibrate if you're moving it one way or another. One way or another. And so I'm right. sure that they, whoever the developers were, yeah. were thinking like, um, "Well, what the heck is this? You know, what is a back and forth motion? They already did the up and down motion for Twilight Princess. What's a back and forth motion?" And they're like, uh, "A harp. It, it <laughs> a would be harp. a harp. A harp. Yeah, they kind of went from wind instrument to because um, then there's like the random trumpet, trumpet and bass." like multiple instruments from in Majora's Mask yep. and then they went to the harp which I what kind of what is that considered well it's I, a, I, I think it's technically well okay so here we go that's interesting because mm-hmm. a piano is actually considered percussion percussion because the hammers hit the string right however a guitar is a string instrument because you're plucking plucking so is a harp a string instrument I think it might be I think string yeah, yeah. I think I think a string By instrument that logic, certainly yeah which I've seen a lot of, I've seen a few TikToks, which I'll show you later, oh. of people on harp, on their harps, um, playing the ocarina songs Oh and stuff. my gosh. I'm just like, I'm going to show you, there's so much fun watching those. Um, so many people love the music. That is such a big deal. But yeah, that was kind of like my little evolution of, I guess, the instruments. I went from flute because I remember the flute in Link to the Past mm-hmm. is what made me think of like, oh, then they changed it to ocarina and then it moved on from there. I just remember there is like a magic flute in the first game mm-hmm. and you play it to open a secret opening. All right. So yeah, simple. Yeah. It's not travel, but it's like when we right. play the secret song. Yeah. I like how I went from something so simple to, and then they made a game that was like, they didn't even think it was going to be such a big, important part of it. And they put it in last minute, like you said, Ocarina of Time. Yes. And it became such a big, a big part of it. You I'd can't, say a staple. It became a staple it, to yeah, the series. Yeah, exactly. And then anyone, if you tell someone, most people, I mean, you hear about an Ocarina, they're going to think about, I don't know, I think of Legend of Zelda. I don't yeah. know of any other games who have like an instrument like that. I think a lot of people learned about that instrument because of Ocarina of Time. Yes. There are not any instruments in Breath of the Wild, are there? Mm. I don't, you certainly don't play any. No, I know mm. that one dude sings or something. Yeah. Cos, about it. Cass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cos. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, the same thing. We're going to have to have an episode on just pronunciation. <laughs> like oh, you guys me. talked about. Oh, I know. <laughs> Even Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. He told me after we recorded that episode, he said, I've been online shopping for black turtlenecks, so be ready. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my gosh. Do it. I'll yeah, edit we it. We might have to. We might have I'll to. I'll direct it. <laughs> well, oh, oh, I like Let's it. Do it. I like it. <laughs> 
Well, do you want to talk about maybe... Well, let's see. Where are we at on our timer? Mm -hmm. Let's... Um, I think we have time to do one more big one. Or maybe we do a small one because actually we're half, halfway in. I have... Um, I got some big ones here. Oh, let's do the lantern. The lantern. Is that okay? Yeah, let's go for it. Do you have it in your notes at all or anything? No, I didn't have Evolution the lantern. lantern. So, hey, no we problem. picked things we didn't have in each other's notes. So yeah, far. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so the first time the lantern shows up, according to the Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia, is a link to the past, and I believe that that's true. Yeah. And it actually shows up really early in the game. It's it's mm -hmm. kind of the first thing you get. Yeah. You know, because they need it. <laughs> oh, they wanted to show off those layers on Super Nintendo that oh, it was going yeah. bright and dark and all that, all those transparencies that they could do on Super Nintendo. Now they really wanted to show that off. So, um, the the lantern was there, and you replenish it, I think, by using magic. I think, or using the lantern uses magic in a yeah, link to the past. I believe so. Mm -hmm. And then I know this a little less, but over in Four Swords Adventures, which I haven't played for a very long time. Uh, Four Swords Adventures was the GameCube version, not mm -hmm. Four Swords, which was the kind of side game on the A Link to the Past re-release for Game Boy Advance. Okay. But I did legitimately play Four Swords Adventures with a group of friends back when it came out. Mm -hmm. And we actually only had three Game Boy Advances, but we had two GameCubes. Oh. And my GameCube had a Game Boy Player. Oh, wow. So <laughs> what we did was we put all the little Link cables together. We had two TVs. We had one running the GameCube, two TVs and two GameCubes. Right. A GameCube on the main TV. We had a small TV to the side running essentially a Game Boy, a Game Boy Advance, and the, through the Game Boy player. So I was playing through that TV on a GameCube controller. <laughs> and then they had two other, we had two other people, three other people on their SPs, Game Boy Advance SPs. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of fun to play. But there was a lantern in there too. And if I recall, it works similar to um, A Link to the Past. Then we have the lantern in the Minish Cap. Have you played the Minish Cap? I'm not sure. No, I have not played Minish Cap. We reviewed it back in... Early season two, perhaps, actually. Mm. Or was it? No, I think it was actually towards the end of season one. I think, I think it was at the end of season one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Probably. absolutely. The, Minish, the Lantern and Minish Cap, um, I think it works the same where you use magic to use it. Okay. But it also has a couple extra functions. You kind of like... It's, it's called the Lantern, but the animation is kind of Link like throws a little fireball. Oh, okay. <laughs> like yeah, he throws I, fire out in front of him. I think he does that in a, a few games. Honestly, maybe I think. maybe a link to the past. Even he kind of because he has to stand next to a thing, right? Because you have to like it's kind of like when you light a lighter. It's like it's like out in front of you, out in front of you. <laughs> so I do recall that uh, in the Minish Cap, the lantern also has. Maybe it's the first time that they started doing some of these like elemental things. No, that is not true because the first time that happened was fire arrows and ocarina melting ice. In fact, is there ice in a previous game? Anyways, um, what you could do to in the melt. Minish Cap with the lantern is you could use it to melt ice when you went into like the, some of the dungeons that were frozen and stuff like that. So the lantern sometimes was used to light things, but it was actually more often used so to melt often things used. Yeah. in the Minish Cap. Here goes that evolution. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> no lanterns in uh, Ocarina or anything like that. I'm sure they didn't want to deal with <laughs> no. the light engine. No, all you had to do was put a stick on fire to light the lamp, the stationary one. Yeah. So that's about it. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And I guess there were some lighting effects with that. And yeah, that there, was basically, was, yeah. there was some that you had to light up to open a door. Mm -hmm. So you're like running around with a stick and hoping it doesn't burn out. Yeah, that was that. that was it, yeah. But not a actual like lamp lamp, no. No. And I do think they did directional lighting on Link where if you held the stick with fire, like the light, the shadows casted, cast correctly on the ground and stuff. But the real mm -hmm. exciting lantern for me was the Lantern in Twilight Princess. Because okay. this is now end of the GameCube life cycle. I know Twilight Princess came out on the Wii, but I consider mm -hmm. it a GameCube title, and I always will. <laughs> because it really, it's a bit, like, a bit like technically Breath of the Wild is a Wii U title. But I digress, because they actually <laughs> switched that one over to... They switched that one over to Switch <laughs> mid-development. <laughs> right. but, but anyway, um, and actually, even though Twilight or Breath of the Wild was originally built for Wii U... I do. I don't know if I would consider it a Wii U game now that I think about it again, because they ended up taking out the second screen experience on Wii U because they knew they wanted to put it on Switch. Okay. So, anyways, maybe it is more of a Switch game. Breath of the Wild <laughs> Two, full on Switch game. We'll have to see what they do yes. with some of that extra power. But in Twilight Princess on the GameCube, the okay. GameCube had all of this cool dynamic lighting that could happen. Remember all that mm -hmm. crazy dynamic lighting in like Luigi's Mansion, one of those first oh, games that yeah. came out. Yeah. And so this was cool because now the lantern. Um, yes, in Super Nintendo, it kind of made the screen brighter or darker, but now it literally affected how far you could or couldn't see if you're in a dark oh, cave. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. The graphics were actually there. So yeah, maybe you had to light some torches here and there like an mm -hmm. ocarina to trigger things, but also sometimes you just really actually needed it 
to move through space. To move through the space, yeah. And there's one other thing. This is the first time that uh, the lantern didn't need magic to oh. light. You may recall you always had to buy oil. Yes, I recall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I recall. And then allegedly there's a lantern in A Link Between Worlds, which I have mm-hmm. not played yet. Which I own now. I will be playing this season because I have I've played to a link to the past. Replay it. I played it a long time ago. I just I don't remember. I don't remember much from it. Really? I remember the beginning and I remember some of the mechanics and that's about it. I need to replay it. I think maybe because when did that come out? Did I play it in a couple high years school? ago? It was a little bit before maybe it's about four years ago now. Because Breath of the Wild is three years old now. Oh, that's true. Yeah, a few years ago. Well, I must have played it when I don't know. I must have been like stressed. Uh, my <laughs> well, my anxiety, my anxiety, my anxiety makes my memory just be all wacky sometimes. So I have to like replay things now that I can actually enjoy it. Fair enough. I hear you. <laughs> I hear. Well, I look forward to um, playing a link between worlds. Maybe we can kind of choose to play it around similar times or something. That might be right. fun. So we can discuss. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so that's pretty much everything for the lanterns. I'm trying to think. There's like a weird spirit lantern. Oh, remember the monkey swings the lantern around to move the smoke out of the way at, a, at certain points? But I don't really think I would consider that. Are there really lanterns after Twilight Princess? Skyward Sword, I don't recall any real lantern type mechanics. No, I don't recall in Skyward Breath Sword. Breath of the Wild definitely doesn't. Mm-mm. Cool. And, and no, as far I like, as my notes go, A Link Between Worlds is the last time. Yeah, because basically they maybe now just, I don't know, they wanted to use it. As much as they could now, it's kind of like, well, let's just have everything lit. It's all good. We don't need any more lanterns. It's all good. Well, I think yeah, once they got to the, the like the actual real lighting in Twilight Princess, and then the A Link Between Worlds mm-hmm. lantern is kind of more of a throwback to A Link to the Past Link anyway. The past. It's like they've got to have it in there. Yeah. Right? So I think that's what's going on there. <laughs> Alyssa, I think we'll go to break right now. Yes. And um, we'll come back with, with plenty more things to discuss. I can see I have many, mm-hmm. many notes here. Um, oh, and some items that I think are a little bit controversial, like are they really an evolution? Perhaps like mm-hmm. the instruments. Like right. is it the evolution of the like the ocarina shows up in many games, mm-hmm. but it was reinterpreted as mm-hmm. a wand and as a harp yeah. and stuff in other games. And I think we can kind of continue that discussion. Sounds good. Amazing. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Hey everybody, David here. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the updates we have on our Patreon page. Now, as some of you know, we do have our three tiers, the sword tier, the white sword tier, and the magical sword tier. And we've been getting some really tremendous support over on Patreon. It's it's truly amazing. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of our new rewards. So for starters, we've decided to add the wallpaper reward to our sword tier. This means that anyone who is a supporter on Patreon will get a special thank you on our website and they'll also receive the ability to download wallpapers once a month from our Patreon page. Now I make these wallpapers myself and it's a lot of fun. They come in a variation of screen sizes. I also make a phone version and an iPad version. I even make an Apple Watch version which is kind of fun. Next we have our white sword tier and that's staying pretty much the same. What the white sword level will give you is early access to each of our episodes. Typically it's about a week before. Um, Also advertisement free versions of those episodes and I record 
record a little Patreon specific intro before each one, just a touch of behind the scenes before we get into the episodes. Also, of course, on the White Sword tier, we have our bonus content, which we release just little mini episodes every, oh, I don't know, every three or four normal episodes, we put a little mini episode in there. That will also be available on the private RSS link that you'll receive by becoming a White Sword member. And lastly, this is the big one. Our Magical Sword tier, Kate and I have decided to bring a camera with us into the studio, you could say, every single episode going forward after episode 17 of season 2. So we just kind of set this camera up and we say a little quick intro to our Magical Sword patrons and we let them be there with us, so to speak, while we record the episode. I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to give our Magical Sword supporters something really special, and I think this is a great way to do it. Okay, so that's it. You can go to patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find links on our website to our Patreon page. We're so grateful for the support we've received already, and um, if you are interested in any of these rewards at all, please go check us out. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> oh, Alyssa, nice. I love it. Hey, uh, where should we have our first meetup? Where do you want to go? Oh, boy. That's such a great question. Here in Chicago. So just many... a tiny little a practice one, a practice meetup. Where should we do There's it? so many great places here um, in the city. Uh, I always just go to familiar places just because when I go out, it's, um, it's rarely. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I rarely go out do now. Do you kind of go out in the Logan Square area? Oh, uh, you know the bowling alley by work? Yes. Where I had my birthday party? Yes, that was fun. I love going there. Um, I like going, I like just going really out. When I go out, I go out really late, though, and only on weekends. Yeah. But there are a lot of places in the city that I've been wanting to try out. So I'm trying to find like some nerd places. Mm-hmm. I do like Logan Arcade. It's a pinball place, it has no connection to, to Zelda, but it's kind of like got the right vibe. Yeah. And then we found a place that's literally called Ganon's Pub oh, right. here I, in Chicago. I forgot. I definitely have to do that. We might that. have to just try it just because of the name or something. Yeah, we definitely should. Like I said, I I, I can always do weekends. Yeah. <laughs> always do weekends uh, in the evenings. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we'll see when we can like figure it out because we got to scope out some places to do a meetup. That's true. Maybe we have some practice meetup mm-hmm. scope outs and we'll see. I'm Definitely. thinking I might actually make a page. I said this in episode one. Mm-hmm. Make a page on the website where we might actually do like a little schedule, and maybe sometimes they yeah. can be even. And I'd even be happy to go up to Milwaukee or mm-hmm. in the general. If it's an hour or two drive away, not that big a deal. Anyways, right. anyways, anyways. No, yeah. Fair enough. So <laughs> first meet up at the bowling alley over by work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, trial run. We gotta try. We maybe. gotta. You gotta get moving. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So as we sat down, you said I have my finger on two items. Yeah. Like you're literally holding spots in your book. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? It's either. Um, Oh, let's go through the hook shot. Oh, I'd love to. The hook shot goes through so many changes and mm-hmm. variations, even up to like how long it goes to how short it goes in different games. Yeah. Um, so there is one in A Link to the Past. That's usually <laughs> where I always start off yeah. at. Well, it's where a lot of this stuff starts. I now know. Yeah. So I, this, uh, I put basically the... Uh, the, the the chart of how like what games have a hook shot links to the past links awakening ocarina of time has a regular and a long shot in that yeah. one majora's mask uh wind waker a link between worlds that's where i stopped at. i'm not sure if there's anywhere else. In between worlds well then this is where it kind of like it, you get into mm-hmm. like are we still talking about the hook shot but then there's the claw shot in twilight princess and skyward sword yep and then, of course, the double claw shot as well. I personally, I know there are technicalities mm-hmm. that the hook shot and claw shot use different things. The hook shot can theoretically go into anything that's wood, even though that's not always exactly the case in Link to the Past. And right. A link, a Link's Awakening, it kind of, or no, no, the Oracle games, they kind of, it's more like it can grab anything that's a solid item and swap you. Um, but I would consider the claw shots and the hook shots all to be kind of the same evolution. How about the grappling hook? Okay, I'm really glad you brought that up. Wait, mm-hmm. the grappling hook? Oh, I was thinking about the whips. Well, there's whips, and then there's the grappling hook. Because I don't because in Wind Waker, yeah. you get a grappling hook, but then you also get a hook shot. I know, I know. So is that a variation of it, or are they just two different things? So my interpretation when I was playing the Wind Waker, and you got that 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 claw claw shot? No, claw hook whip. <laughs> <laughs> the Wind Waker one. What's the Wind Waker one? The Wind Waker grappling hook. The grappling hook, mm-hmm. which is essentially the whip in Skyward Sword. So yeah. both Wind Waker and Skyward Sword, the first time you do a grab something and and move, you know, the whips, the whips and the grappling hook are different because they do create a swing mechanic. 
That's true. And the claw shots and hook shots never do that. Where They're the just a straight line. Hook shot, you just hang on for dear life. You hooked onto something, you're going that way. You can't stop. You can't control it. It's like you're going. You hooked onto that thing. That's where you're going. <laughs> if there's no floor beneath you, you're going straight down. Like that's that's basically the hook shot. <laughs> it's true. How many times I fall in a lot of Ocarina of time thinking I can make it onto something and there's no thing underneath me and it's like there I go. <laughs> um that hook shot too it's, it pulls him so hard that think about that animation. He's just like straight lines. <laughs> yeah. His, like supermaning like blah he's pulling him so fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Or falling through some floor and linked to the, and a uh, link to the past like that. It's okay, maybe the hook shot also the hook shot lets go once you get there whereas the claw shot continues to hold on. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? That's true. You have to like because the claw shot. Grabs, yeah, you literally have to it? like manually unhook. Unhook it. Where, yeah. Well, I think it's debatable, but let's talk about all three of these experiences then, because mm -hmm. I think the whips and the well, the whip and spirit tracks and Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword's whip mm -hmm. to me was the grappling hook. Honestly, it feels pretty much similar. I think you can grab a few things and pull them with okay. Skyward Sword, but they're just trying to Skyward Sword. They're just trying to get you to move your Wii mode around as much as possible, right? Yep, gotta get that movement in there, that arm movement. Yeah. So if if the hook shot starts in a link to the past. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. That one seems pretty straightforward, right? You just kind of, I think that one connects into, if you interpret those gray tiles as, as stone or metal, I think right. it can connect into stone and metal and I stuff. I feel like if it's like, not like really, if it's like, um, I, I, I guess to me, it's kind of like if it's like a crumbling kind of thing, it's going to hang on to, where if it's like a straight like metal, it just does ding. You can't, you can't hook onto it. Or like certain enemies, you can't even hook onto. Where in like Orchidra of Time, you can, yeah, like hit him with the enemies and stuff like that, or bring something to you. Absolutely, and we mm -hmm. can talk about the Link's Awakening hook shot. That's pretty similar. I think they do a, an animation where you just kind of swap. Um, yeah. But if we do talk about Ocarina of Time, one thing that's kind of cool is, you know what? I never thought about this. Mm -hmm. Is Ocarina at the time? Ocarina of the time. <laughs> Ocarina, Ocarina, of time. Ocarina of time. The first time that the hookshot can be used as a weapon, or can you defeat enemies in a link to the past with the hookshot? I don't think I ever really I tried. I don't think I've tried it. Um, I don't think. You guys can correct us if we're wrong. I don't think so. So I don't. I don't. I feel like um, you either shoot an arrow at the enemies, or you're using your sword at mm -hmm. an enemy. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever even thought of trying to use it on an enemy. Right. In Ocarina, you can do it. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing that's kind of cool about that is that once you fire that hook shot, it stays mm -hmm. in its... It doesn't trap... Like if you have an enemy running around you in a circle in Ocarina of Time mm -hmm. and you Z-target it and you use your hook shot, the hook shot goes to where the enemy is at the moment you push the button. And if the enemy yeah. keeps moving, you'll miss. You miss, yeah. Which is a kind of a cool strategy because with mm -hmm. the arrows, they shoot so fast that you can kind of track. Yeah, exactly. It's that's That's an interesting mechanic, definitely. So it's kind of like... It's accurate. If you're shooting at something that's moving, you're going to... Yeah. Well, the, or, uh, the hook shot is cool in Ocarina because it's it's a weapon that doesn't run out, where arrows do run out. Yes. But the, the, way, to, the way to balance that out is that you basically have to do it on things that are slow moving. Slow moving, you yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then Majora's Mask hook shot, I don't recall it being much different than Ocarina Time. So the only difference with the Majora's Mask one is the length. <gasps> so the length oh, of... Oh, you have a chart here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have a chart of the length of the hook shots. Yeah, so it's basically they determine it by like the height of Link and like in the games, like how far it goes. Oh, okay. So the regular... <laughs> As he gets yanked along. <laughs> according to this, um, the Ocarina of Time regular hook shot only goes up to like 15 meters, where okay. the long shot is 25. So yeah. in Majora's Mask, it's automatically up to 25. So it's the longest one. It just one. went long right It's the, the longest in the games that feature the hook shot. According to this, Majora's Mask is the longest one. Yeah, I see that. And what's yeah. after it? What's the next longest here? What it's is this one? Wind Waker. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wind Waker, and then Ocarina of Time, and then it's the shortest one is Link's, Link's Awakening. Awakening. Yeah, and that makes sense because those screens had to be so small. There's yeah. not a lot of tiles on those screens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that's the only a real difference I can tell from yeah. it. Um, the one thing I do like about the... Um, the hook shot in Wind Waker is how it looks on Link's hand, where it literally covers his whole little hand. Yeah, yeah. Is this one right here? Yeah. <laughs> so the other one, the hook shot, it has like a handle mm -hmm. look to it, where this one, he literally puts his hand in there, and it's yeah, just kind of like Evil Dead style or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought it was like that's like the cutest thing. I don't know. It's like one of my favorite like looks of the hook shot. I love it. Yeah, I yeah. would agree. I would agree for sure. Mm -hmm. And then a link between worlds has it, which is a, just a callback to a link to the past. However. Mm -hmm. um, after, Major after Wind Waker, we go to Twilight Princess, where it is mm -hmm. the claw shot. 
The claw shot. And I think you, I think you never get a hook shot in Twilight Princess. Claw shot. <laughs> yes, I don't think you do. You can upgrade it to a double claw shot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, that's when things really get interesting because that's when you can start kind of like being like Spider Man and be like. <laughs> Yeah, which is really fun. <laughs> and that's also a good example. You mentioned earlier, like when you hook shot and if there isn't floor, you fall down in, yeah. the, in, in these other games. With the claw shot, as I said, it does continue to hang on. Mm-hmm. And so you can re-aim to another area uh, with your second claw shot. I feel like that's a hook. Sh- in my opinion, that's a hook shot uh, evolution. Yeah, evolution of a hook shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. And then that claw shot comes back in Skyward Sword because I'm sure they were excited mm-hmm. about having people point at the screen and aim around with their claw shot. Yeah. Does the claw shot work the same in Skyward Sword as it does in Twilight? Where you can like... If, in Twilight Princess, if you grab something up high, you can actually do a vertical chain that you can go up and down and then re-aim horizontally. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Remember that? Mm-hmm. I don't remember if you can do that in Skyward Sword or not. I don't remember for Skyward Sword if that's the same, um, if it has that same kind of like mechanic to yeah. it. Um, mm-hmm. Also, Skyward Sword is a bit like the Wind Waker where you do get the whip first if you swing and then later on get the... And then later on, yeah. So I feel like it's like a variation of the hook shot because it's, 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 um, it's a little different but still has the same where you need it. You basically need it to get across obstacles, Mm -hmm. which is like a big deal in these games. So, The way that sometimes you get a simplified version of something and then you get a a beefed up version a little bit later. Mm -hmm. To me, people could disagree with me. I don't mind. But to me, the whip was always kind of like that first warm-up version. And then you get, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like the slingshot to the arrows. It's like Mm -hmm. you start with the slingshot and then you get the arrows. They kind of do the same thing. Yeah, it's like in Wind Waker, you got the grappling hook. But once I got that hook shot, I barely used the grappling hook. Yeah. Yeah. I was just because I, I was weird, but like I would places where you should use the grappling hook to swing. I just hook shot and just stand on top of the post. Oh, sure. And you can literally like roll jump and you make it yeah. to the next spot. So I that's kind of like what I would do. I was like, I got the hook shot and it looks cool. So that's what I does. I kind of like abandoned the grappling hook. Interesting. And I'm sure there were some areas that I definitely needed it to swing by, but I mean, I was just like hook shot, hook shot. It was, it was one of my favorite. Um, uh, weapons in the game or items to use in the game for yeah. sure mm-hmm. just seeing what our time is okay cool we're good too yeah yeah we're doing good mm-hmm. uh let's see what else should we do then <laughs> iron boots they don't change too much they first first are in uh, ocarina of time yeah and i think in the iron boots you well you use them in the water of mm-hmm. course to to sink <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah the infamous and the jink water. jink 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 when you're walking in them so heavy mm-hmm. Wind Waker is pretty much the same mechanic. A lot of times you use um, the in Ocarina, you also use the iron boots to get yourself some extra weight. You definitely do this in Wind Waker to push mm-hmm. buttons down that have been rusted over oh, a little yeah. hard to push on. Yeah, it gives the you rusty Wind Waker, buttons. You get an extra stomp. And then in Twilight Princess, the only other thing that's interesting about the iron boots is I think don't they have that magnetic thing where like when you're in the Goron mines and stuff, you can actually walk on the special blue areas. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> The iron boots. Mm-hmm. What yeah. else do you have? Um, could do the me. I like the different uh the the different looks of the mirror shield. Yeah. The evolution of just how it looks. Um, my favorite one. I mean, I think it starts off in a link to the past. <laughs> I don't think there's any other um before that that I have so. it. Um, I like it because it has like the the tri the the triforce and it has like the clouds on it, mm. and then it evolves to. <laughs> In Majora's, Majora's Mask, it's like literally looks like a Goron face that's kind of like in pain. Yes. He's just kind of like screaming. I don't know what's going on there, but it's like one of my favorite looks and it's round. And I like how it's, um, you use it to basically it was to illumin- uh, illuminate, illuminate things. Mm-hmm. But in Ocarina of Time is my favorite because you really needed it to solve some dungeons, like to get through some dungeons. Like in the, I think is it the, which temple is it? The one with the sand. It's the spirit temple. <laughs> the spirit temple. Yeah. yeah, you needed it to definitely unlock, and they had the the whole mirror puzzles, which is like my favorite thing yeah. to solve. Were the mirror puzzles because it reminds me of ancient Egypt, you know, and like those movies where just like, oh, the light needs to hit this mirror, to hit that mirror, to hit that mirror, yep, to open that door. So I was like, really fun. That's my one of my favorite shields is the mirror shield. For sure. And like how it changes in design. And they keep using it for a while. It shows back up mm-hmm. in Wind Waker. Yeah. And I, does it go past Wind Waker? I don't have notes on the Wind Maker, Wind Waker. I, the only four that it tells me, let me go back to my notes on my phone. It says Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, Wind, Make, Wind Waker. It says Minish Cap has one. Yeah. Yeah, it does actually. Now that I think about Majora's it. Majora's Mask. Uh, 
favorite pu- I already said because I like it. puzzles and the design and how it goes from some simple to a Goron face that looks like yeah. he's in pain. Yeah, that's that was uh, my notes on the on the mirror shield. And remember with the mirror shield when you do I guess reflect the light, the mm-hmm. pattern of the shield kind of is in that light reflection. Yeah, yeah. And I remember in Majora's Mask there's that crazy face that gets put the on the face. wall. Yeah, yeah. The face, yeah. The poor thing. <laughs> the poor thing. I don't know what happened, why they designed I, I want to look it up, actually. Why did they decide on that face? I don't know. There's a lot of pain There's in a lot of mask. pain in that. <laughs> I yeah. don't get it. He literally looks like a Goron in pain. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. Yeah. And I'm looking at it right now as we sit here. Mm-hmm. I wonder where that's coming from. Does it have anything in the description in the encyclopedia here? We're doing... This is like... We're just like basically talking about the Legend of Zelda encyclopedia here. Just says uh-huh. it has a face-like pattern. Okay. Um, where it's hidden. Where to get it. Oh, it seems that the king of Ikana, who died in battle long ago, <gasps> sought true light in death, and that cry carried over into the shield. So it's the king. Now I know. Wow. <laughs> it was sitting right in front of me. I just had to died. read the notes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, that makes what, a lot more sense. So what happens when I rush? <laughs> well, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. So Because that's in the Ikana Valley dungeon, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The Ikana. Mm-hmm. Cool. Ikana Castle. Oh, that's what it was. That's, that's right. really that's right. cool. Neat. Yeah, pretty cool. I kind of want to talk about boomerangs. Do it. Is that right? Boomerangs. Oh my gosh, they are just a staple. Mm-hmm. And I didn't put boomerangs. So oh I'm, really? I'm lis- I'm oh listening. great. Cool. <laughs> um, the first time a boomerang shows up is in the original The Legend of Zelda, and in fact, I believe it's even in that first dungeon, isn't it? I believe so. From I what I remember. Find it. You find you find a couple things in that first dungeon. You find the bow, but not arrows yet. I think you find the boomerang. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you buy the boomerang, but I think, no, no, I, I do think you might get it in the first dungeon because it's a staple. In that game, mm. the boomerang famously stuns enemies. Okay. And in the original The Legend of Zelda, it's it can get difficult at times. Mm-hmm. And the, a typical flow of gameplay is throw out that boomerang, stun the enemy, go in there with your sword if you don't have your magic sword. Right. And like, you just stun, 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 and all of that. And also another thing that was interesting about the boomerang is you could throw it. Even though Link could only walk in four directions in that game, you could throw it in eight. So you could throw it oh. on angles. So you, you can get pretty dynamic with running into a room and shooting it up and shooting it down and then all this other stuff. And that was kind of fun. Um, the boomerang shows up again then in A Link to the Past, mm-hmm. which is p- pretty much, in my opinion, I use it almost identically the same way. Um, some of the th- extra things that show up in A Link to the Past are like we now have these the switch boxes, the red and blue switch blocks, mm-hmm. um, which there wasn't anything like that in the first game. And so you start learning that you can use the boomerang as a trigger device Triggering, yep. to shoot over some of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of cool. Maybe that's it's not that the boomerang necessarily has any new abilities, but they start using it in a slightly using new way. It in new ways, yeah. In a link to the past. Link's Awakening is almost <laughs> identical to Excuse a link me. to the past. You're perfectly fine. Mm. Almost identical to a link to the past as far as the use of the boomerang. The use of it, right. Mm-hmm. You still have to map it to a button and everything like that in a link to pa- in Link's Awakening. Pardon me, I'm just taking a sip of water. Then we have mm-hmm. Ocarina of Time. And you mm-hmm. get the boomerang. When do you get the boomerang in Ocarina of Time? How? Can, why am I forgetting this? Um, come on, brain. Mm, mm. You get Jabu it. Jabu. Oh I yeah, you need, Jabu it, Jabu you need it for Jabu Jabu. You need all the tentacles. You need it for the tentacles. Yep, you're right for Jabu Jabu. I like that. I like the little mechanic of um, when you're selecting them, ding, 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 and then you let it go, and it's just like hits all the targets that you want to hit. Yes. Now, I think that actually might be Wind Waker, mm-hmm. however, the multiple targets. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was in Ocarina, too. In Is Ocarina, it? you can Z-target, but you can only oh, go to one thing. So you might be right. I might be confusing it. So th- that's how also another way it changes. So in Ocarina, you just hit... You need it for the tentacles, the stupid orby ball thing, too. Yep. And then the, in Wind Waker, you get the multiple targets to hit which so, is really fun you're absolutely right <laughs> basically the multiple targets thing just didn't exist in the gameplay yet in ocarina yeah um so you just z target just like you do anything else so you can throw right, the boomerang right. at it you yeah. can also use the boomerang in ocarina of time to bring items back to you uh, oh like yeah you, can, you know z target a skulltala or whatever and bring right. it to you a heart all that kind of stuff which makes no sense for boomerang but i like the i like the ability yeah it's cool <laughs> it's gonna bring that to me because i'm not gonna go over there <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And then actually just before Wind Waker, which I'd be happy to talk about a little mm-hmm. bit more in a second, um, just before Wind Waker, the boomerang does show up in the Oracle series. Okay. But it's basically just like the Link's Awakening and Link to the Past boomerang. It's typical boomerang action. Boomerang action. <laughs> yep, yep. But then we have the Wind Waker. Wind Waker. Yeah, so maybe you can speak to that a little bit. No, I just, the one, it was just, it's just fun, the the multiple targeting thing. Mm-hmm. And it made it, um, there's that one boss 
I forget which one it is, but it has the the, the connections to the ceiling. A bunch of vines hanging down, like or something, vines or something. Or maybe they're organic. and you have to like break them down so that he can come down. I think. Yeah. And then you had to go in with the sword, or me, I just spammed the boomerang because I just oh, didn't want to get close to it. Well, I was <laughs> when I, I first to... played when I was first playing Wind Waker, I was just always scared of dying. And I forget that like death is so forgivable in most of the Legend of Zelda games. Yeah. Almost all of them, really. It's true. It's like you come back to a point, but I still I always just wanted to try not to die. Mm -hmm. So I always would just stand back and like spam. It would take me longer, but I'd get there, you know? So that's just one way I'd use the boomerang. It was satisfying to hear that like bing 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 and then yeah, ding, and it'd come it back to you. And those um what do you call it? Those black porcupine thingies that kind of stick yes. to you. Oh. Just when you see a group of them, just like, I'm going to hit you from far away. Yeah, and that was fun because they'd always be really close. And mm -hmm. all because I think you could target five things at once. Five, I believe, yeah. And it just goes, beep, 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 like real mm -hmm. fast. Just, boom, and you just sweep them out of there. Yeah, I guess they hang on to you and you can't move as fast or you have to like sword and spin. And it, that yeah. was obnoxious. Those were obnoxious. <laughs> now, it does show up then next after that in Four Swords, mm -hmm. which is that the Game Boy one, not Four Swords Adventures. Four okay. Swords, which I've never played yet, but we're mm -hmm. going to do we're gonna do it on this show. We're going to have to get four Game Boy Advances together. <laughs> yes. Uh, four <laughs> cartridges. I will find, I will make Make it happen, and Sorry. we'll do an episode on it. Um, and then Four Swords Adventures. I'm assuming it's the same. I, like again, like I said, I played this a long time ago. I remember. I recall it working just like the one in A Link to the Past. Then we have the boomerang in Minish Cap, mm -hmm. and I think I don't recall if in Minish Cap if you can bring items back to you with the boomerang. But there's nothing particularly. A lot of times it's just it's your stun tool. It's your stun the tool. Stun, you use to stun. You to know? stun. Yeah. However, in the 3D games, the boomerangs get much more interesting. Um, in Phantom Hourglass, you the way you actually throw the boomerang. So let, maybe you know the boomerang is something you just push the button and it throws out in front of you. And if you move, it'll come back to you. So sometimes okay. you can use that to your advantage in any of these 2D games, as you right, know. Right. Yeah. You throw it in a straight line, but if you move, it tracks you and it goes up, back. down, or wherever yeah. you go. However, in uh, Wind Waker, it kind of defies physics in that it travels <laughs> directly to whatever you target. Right. And even if that's not a perfect circle, it goes bing, 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 bing. Yeah. So the next time, and ironically, it's the same, or coincidentally, it's the exact same boomerang art style. Oh. In Phantom <laughs> Hourglass. I see that. The boomerang is executed by hold, holding a shoulder button. He holds the back, and then you use your pen to draw the line of where you want the boomerang to go. Interesting. And the boomerang follows that line. So it doesn't really follow physics. No, not at all. But you know? that's interesting. Yeah. And actually, I just remembered I shouldn't jump to Phantom Hourglass just yet. I really want to technically jump to the Gale boomerang, mm -hmm. which is actually listed in a different spot in the encyclopedia because it starts with G. Oh. But the Gale boomerang is in Twilight Princess. Okay. And you maybe you remember how you can also trigger five things. They mm -hmm. br totally brought that in from Wind Waker. Yeah. I mean, it's the same engine after all. And it's fun. Why not? But that, win <laughs> but that boomerang has some extra properties. Um, mm -hmm. May I ask you to talk about that? I don't remember much of oh, that. No problem. No problem. So no problem. For it. <laughs> so the Gale boomerang also has a wind mechanic. A wind mechanic. And so um, you can throw it out there and rustle up leaves, and uh, it makes a little oh, tornado. Oh, okay. I'm you starting can, to remember. Maybe okay. you remember in the forest dungeon, that first dungeon you go into. There's like panels that you can throw the boomerang at mm -hmm. and get them to spin to make other things spin. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of these like yeah paddles. That you hit, you throw the boomerang at to do wind. To do wind, which yeah. Which in Wind Waker, that was done with the Deku leaf. With the leaf, yeah. I remember, yeah. yeah with the leaf. Yeah, so, same mechanic. I forgot. I like how they um, grabbed some things from the Wind Waker wind kind of stuff and then moved it on to um, the, for the gale. What yeah. is it called? Gale? The gale boomerang. Gale yeah. boomerang. So the same mechanic where you need the wind to help you out through, uh, through certain obstacles. And also that whole like kind of tornado wind thing that the gale boomerang does logically helps the um the whole idea of like having the boomerang go collect something and bring it back to you oh. it kind of makes a little more sense in twilight princess because the item right. gets sucked up in the tornado in the, in the little wind yeah in little tornado. You. yeah yeah i thought they did a good job with that gale boomerang That's a good one. though i did find that i didn't use the gale boomerang as much in battle mm. uh, in twilight princess Whereas in the early 2D games, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, The Legend of Zelda, you're mm -hmm. just firing that thing. It's like yeah. your second weapon. <laughs> it, it's your yeah. it's your long range. If if you were to compare it to perhaps playing like Halo, it's your grenade before you go in with the pistol. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's your like boom, boom and then you go sword, 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 sword. Mm -hmm. And so I actually I'm fast I'm fast and loose with the boomerang when I play the 2D games. But in the in Twilight <laughs> Princess, it was a little bit more puzzle solving than it puzzle, was anything yeah. else. The puzzles, yep. In Spirit Tracks, the boomerang shows up again, mm -hmm. um, but it's executed the same way as Phantom Hourglass, where you're just drawing on the screen. 
and then it comes okay. back around. And then A Link Between Worlds, you use it, but I haven't played A Link Between Worlds yet. I'll be playing it this season. I can't wait. And I'm sure it works mm-hmm. similar to A Link to the Past. Yeah, it is similar to A Link to the Past. Yeah. Yeah, same same little kind of like mechanic. Well, cool. I'll be spamming it because I like to spam. <laughs> and then it's in Triforce Heroes as well, but I'm sure that it works similarly to A Link to the Past in that game. You're going to make me go back to all these games. I need any more time in the day. Oh, believe me, it happens. <laughs> like every time I record one of these episodes, this it all re-triggers. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm going to try that one again. It's like, wait, that was the, some part of my memory I did not remember. Now I need to go back to the game so that I can re- be refreshed. Yeah. It's a pleasure. It's it's honestly a pleasure. My Wii U right now, its mm-hmm. entire main screen is just Zelda games. Zelda games. Yeah. Yeah, and you can just kind of pick and choose. Okay, so that's my uh, my thoughts on the boomerang. And they really they took that wind thing away. I don't know if, you know, maybe because in Twilight Princess the Gale boomerang was more for puzzle solving. I'm sure you can use it in combat, but because it was more for puzzle solving, um, in later games they kind of brought blowers or wind mechanics back there was the deku leaf well, obviously in breath of the wild mm-hmm. boomerangs in breath of the wild uh, let's talk about that we're not really doing the, bo- the breath of the wild stuff as much but the boomerangs no, in breath I of the wild are there and they can it's interesting you actually execute them differently if you just throw an item that's a boomerang or mm-hmm. if you hold a boomerang breath of the wild you basically use it as a sword yeah and you can whack 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 on an enemy it likes to do the whacking yeah thing. but <laughs> if you use your r button which throws an item it'll mm-hmm. throw the boomerang and if as it, it will circle back to you and if you push a as it comes back to you you'll mm-hmm. re-catch it the yeah. difference in breath of the wild is you have to manually execute the catching of the boomerang whereas oh. in all the other games it just comes it back just comes back to you this way you kind of you can't just like <laughs> like mm-hmm. i used to like i'm sure everyone has done like an ocarina of time you kind of just like throw the boomerang and keep running yes and see yeah. how far you can get before it catches you <laughs> You just oh, like that's cool. Yeah, you just do just go out to the field and throw it in one direction and then run the opposite direction and see I've how far see how how far you can get before it reaches you. I swear they just decide, no, we're not gonna do this and it just brings it back to you quicker than it should. Oh, like at a certain point there's like it just warps to you. Yeah, it's just like kinda, more about time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at the I'm at the forest temple in Ocarina 3D right now, and uh, I'll, I'll have to give it a try. I'll have to go back to do uh, it. It's funny. I feel it. like everyone, at least every kid who's played it, has tried it because it's kind of like you mean anywhere I move, it's gonna come back to me, and then you're like, I'm gonna run that way. <laughs> yeah, throw it that way, run that way. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Um, any? Do you have anything else on your notes? I have a few. I have hammers. Ooh, I do not. Hammers, yes, hammers. Let's talk about Seen it. Seen in most Zelda games. Use, the users are mainly to smash boulders, um, smash boulders to smash enemies like posts in the ground. Um, it yeah. evolves to kind of just being um, to get rid of obstacles. Really, I yeah. feel like in a Link to the Past, to the point where you actually need it to um, defeat a boss. I think in maybe Wind Waker, you use the hammer to get the the big bird. The big bird, yeah. So you. you you need it to smash the armor, basically. Yeah, the big bird's wearing head armor, mm-hmm. like a helmet almost, and you can use the hammer to crack that open. Yes, always fun. Um, my favorite, um, my favorite look of the hammer is in Wind Waker because it literally looks like a twig with a big old hammer at the end. Wait, and which it kinda one? Has, oh, in Wind Waker, in Wind Waker, kind of has that flexibility. Yes, where it goes, it goes from looking just like a regular hammer, like a two-sided hammer, to um, like literally a twig with a big old metal piece at the end. It's yeah. hilarious. Well, in A Link to the Past, mm-hmm. it feels just like a mallet, and even sounds like one. It kind of just goes. When you use yeah, it, you know? Yeah, mallet, yeah. Um, and then in Ocarina of Time, you get this kind of metal-looking hammer, and it does feel like there's some weight to it. When you hold that thing, yeah. it doesn't distort or move or anything, but it goes kunk when you it use kunk. it. yep. Yeah. <laughs> Twilight Princess. Is there a hammer in Twilight Princess, did you say? Twilight Princess. I think so. I don't have any notes on it. I am like, I, I put, like, um, there's a lot of different hammers, <laughs> different names to the hammers. Oh, sure, Let sure. Let me see. Of the wild high roars. I think there is the a past. hammer in Twilight Princess because I think you use it to crush the ice, to crack open the ice and stuff. Maybe yeah, I think I did most of these notes just kind of like online because in here it really doesn't give you that much on it in the encyclopedia. Well, I tell you what, if you go to the, if I may, break the show for a second and say if you go mm-hmm. to the uh, the database, which is in the middle of the encyclopedia, right. then you can find stuff. But it is alphabetized. That's so true. The, if, the, if the hammer has a modifier or an adjective, it will yeah. get sorted into a different spot. Because there's literally, um, in Breath of the Wild has the most different hammers, obviously, because there's a lot of different weapons you can carry. Uh, Ocarina of Time in Hyrule Warriors has a Megaton hammer. The Megaton. Uh-huh. 
A Link Between Worlds has um, nice hammer. I don't recall that. Uh, the Wind Waker one's called a skull hammer. Yep. Um, Link to the Past is the magic hammer and four swords. And then Hyrule Warriors has the weirdest ones like white bunny hammer, wooden hammer. Hyrule Warriors, really? Yeah, rental hammer. I guess you could rent that one out. <laughs> Yeah, just the hammer alone shows up also in Phantom Hourglass, and you can just mm -hmm. clock it down. But the, I do remember um, skidding the hammer in Wind Waker and, rec and clearly seeing that it was represented dramatically differently than, like, the very realistic hammer that was in Ocarina. Yeah. You know? I, I feel like I said, like, it, like, I like how, like, I remember in the Link to the Past, just like clunk because of the posts that are in your way yep. to Wind Waker, this thing on a twig, and you're just like swinging it around. It's, it's like fun. springy. It's boom, boom, boom. springy, yeah. It's that's, funny. That's the one time in, in Wind Waker where I feel like they kind of poked fun at the idea that, like, Link has all these items and some of them are massive, but. But once he puts them away, like, where do they go? Where did it go? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. that, that one kind of comes out like, boing. Like, yes, it actually is, it is obnoxiously too large. That is so true. Even when he <laughs> swings it, it's like really, <laughs> Oh, yeah. It takes a lot of effort to swing. It's just real. And it really <laughs> plops down, you might recall. Yeah. Or like smashing the, uh, what are they called? Uh, smashing down the mini blends. Oh, that's yeah. very satisfying to just smash them. They become flat and then poof, yeah, they're they, there, they yeah. die. <laughs> it's just satisfying to see them go flat mm -hmm. when you're using it. Yeah, and that's a balancing mechanic where the hammer is so strong, but it takes so long mm -hmm. for Link to pull back and swat down that mm -hmm. that's how they keep it balanced. If he was able to just go pop, 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 yeah, then that would be a, an overpowered weapon. You know, exactly. It is. It is a thing. Hammers. <laughs> When's the last time we see a hammer? Is there a hammer in Skyward? I don't recall. I don't really, there aren't, there aren't hammers or anything in, well, there aren't hammers in Breath of the Wild, but there kind of is. There's that goofy one that you can buy from the monster guy, the spring for, hammer. Yeah, for Breath, Breath of the Wild. for Breath of the Wild, it shows like a lot of different hammers. Just They're just different weapons you can use. Really? There's a boulder breaker, a cobble crusher. Um, oh, you don't enough. realize the names of it because you're always, since you change weapons so much yeah. with that whole mechanic, I feel you don't really go to research. And also, it's uh, two, they're mainly two-handed. Yeah. And I don't know, but I like a shield. I like... I'm a shield sword. Yeah. yeah. I like a shield shield, sh whoa, shield sword. Shield sword. <laughs> there goes yep. my speech there. But there are, if there's a spring-loaded hammer. Yep. The spring-loaded hammer is what I was thinking of. That's Stone. the goofy one where it sends people flying. But you're right. Yeah. There's hammers all over Breath of the Wild. Yeah. There's an iron sludge hammer even yeah but yeah there, i it gave me a list um when i was doing my research of the different names of hammers and where they were from and uh, all the different there's like a lot of different ones in breath of the wild um which makes me think of like how sometimes you're going through weapons in breath of the wild you don't really realize the name because it's like well i'm not gonna really hang on to this for a while like i want my i'm sorry i want my shield my sword <laughs> yeah so you don't realize all the names there's a lot of weapons <laughs> um yeah, you're right. Let's talk about flippers real quick. Flippers. Yeah, do you, do yes. you have that in your notes at all? No, but okay. I remember coming across it and thinking that that's something we could talk about. <laughs> There's not too many of them, mm -hmm. but the first time you, you get one is uh, in on, in Zora's River in A Link to the Past. In A Link to the Past, yes. And most of the time, flippers allow you to swim underwater. Mm -hmm. That's usually how they're represented. Um, in A Link to the Past, they let you swim at all, I think. Mm -hmm. In some of the deep water, right? Yeah. And you can dive That's down, it. perhaps, but it at least lets you go into the deep water when, once you get so, the flippers. I think so, yeah. When you get the flippers, you're allowed to, yeah, because if you try to walk over the, where it's like, shady, more shaded, then you kind of just, like, fall through where it pushes you back to yeah. the land. <laughs> um, in Link's Awakening, I think it's pretty much the same. It'll let you swim in the deep water. Yeah. And that's when you also do that crazy river stuff. But then something that's a little interesting is in the Oracle series, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, mm -hmm. you get the flippers, but they're two flippers. Literally, the, the icon is represented as two. Oh. Because I in the Oracle that. games, you literally go underwater for an entire section and just talk to all the Zoras oh. underwater. And so... And actually, there's an upgrade in one of the Oracle games where you literally get a mermaid suit, which gets a little... It's like it's like Flippers Plus. Okay. You actually get like a mermaid tail. But we'll stick with the flippers here. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the Minish Cap, you get the flippers, which basically lets you swim and dive down. And then last but not least, um, the flippers in A Link Between Worlds, which I still haven't played, as I've been saying so often. I feel like there's one more in there that I'm... For flippers? Yeah. That, but they're not really called flippers. Maybe I'm just thinking of the mermaid suit, to be honest. 
you know where that's why they're not it's like it, it's it's the thing that allows you to swim underwater and in the oracle games you oh, actually yeah. when you dive down in the oracle games mm-hmm. it cuts to one of those side scrolling sections right because i think in like in ocarina you basically learn you have to learn to dive right well yeah i mean they play that game to teach you how to dive yeah so that's so instead of using like flippers that allow you to go into deep water they basically teach you how to go into deep water and then you learn how to breathe longer too really so they took the flippers kind of thing out they did it they did i agree really the closest thing is the stinking iron boots oh gosh yeah that's how you go underwater (laughs) yeah the iron you get the scale so you can breathe yeah and then uh (laughs) iron boots yeah very different than flippers yeah, and then in Majora's Mask, uh, again, you just become one with a mask, so that's how you can be able to get around water. Oh, so there's yeah. also no flippers You're in right, there right, either. Right. Yeah. Most of the flippers show up in the 2D games. In the 2D games, yeah. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. in, fact, in fact, by these notes, it's only it's only 2D games. Because mm-hmm. that's how they get that extra layer of, depth, you know, you, oh, go down under the water. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do you want to talk about? I have bombs on here. You want to talk about bombs a little bit? The bombs. Now, bombs are interesting because they don't change much. They don't. But they've been in every single Zelda game, which is why I wanted to include them. They first appear in in The Legend of Zelda. Mm -hmm. Then they are in... I think they're in The Adventure of Link. I remember seeing bombs on here. You use a hammer Mm -hmm. in Adventure of Link. I think you use a hammer to to break through stones in The Adventure of Link in Zelda 2. I just remembered that. Oh, boy. Um... (coughs) Oh, yeah, bombs. <laughs> I think the biggest change is that after a while, the bombs, um, you eventually, like in Ocarina and beyond, you have to get a bomb bag to hold more bombs to increase your inventory. Yep. That's a big thing. Um, in Skyward Sword, the bombs are oftentimes, they're not even necessarily bought. They're always you're often collected as bomb flowers. The bomb flowers. Yeah, so bomb flowers are adjacent to bombs. It, it, yeah. Basically, they're just, in every game, they're that thing you get before you can carry them with you. I think it's really just a, a mechanic. Um, the big thing for me with bombs is that in Skyward Sword, you can roll them. You can oh, actually use your... right. In every other way, you basically set them down or throw them. Mm-hmm. But at least by the time we hit Skyward Sword. So it's Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle, the Oracle series, The Wind Waker, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, Skyward Sword, A Link Between Worlds, and Triforce Heroes. There is not a Zelda game without bombs, it seems. Yeah, and they change it up a bit. In Majora's Mask, you get the bomb mask, which almost kills you when you <laughs> use it. <laughs> That's right. You wear it and you stand next to something and you activate it and it hurts you, but you get what you need done, done. Basically, that mask blows up like it's a bomb. Yeah. And I think you still wear it. Yeah, you can still and wear it. Hurts it. You. Um, when you explode it, then it becomes transparent and you can kind of see your face through it. When you first put it on, wow. it's um like a it's a skull on it, I believe, black with a skull. Okay. And then when you blow it up, I know it becomes kind of transparent and you can see your your the character's face. Um, I like the bomb chews. Bomb chews are cool. What is it kind of like? Maneuver them around. They just do, 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 kaboom. <laughs> yeah, there's the bomb shoes show up, what, three, four times, I think? Two, three times? I don't have notes on the bomb shoes. It just, it's just here. I just remember it. Um, Definitely an ocarina. Uh, I just remember using them in Oh, ocarina. here we go. Mm-hmm. Four games. Uh, ocarina of Time, then Majora's Mask. That makes sense. Right. They show up in the Oracle series. So the Oracle games, obviously, were made by Capcom. They were a partnership with Nintendo, and they came out you know, right after Ocarina of Time and a little mm-hmm. bit with Majora's Mask. Right. So they... If it happened in Ocarina or Majora's Mask, those Oracle games basically tried to also do it. You know what I mean? And I think that's why we see a lot of these repeating items. Yeah. Then finally, the bomb shoe only shows up one more time in Phantom Hourglass. And in Phantom Hourglass, a little bit like the boomerang, you draw the bomb shoe's path with your pen, and then it follows that it line. It follows it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. Where in, in Ocarina of Time, I don't think you really can control it. You just got to face away, and it takes off. Isn't that right? It'll go forward and then up a wall. It'll do whatever it needs to do. In Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Now, I think the biggest change that happened to bombs out of any of the Zelda games, the biggest change is... Ooh, what are you looking? I was just seeing, like, which... it uh, Basically, there's a list in the encyclopedia. Chart. It shows you the games and what bombs are in the games. Oh. Which so, one yeah. has all of them? Is there any that have all? The one... What's on the bottom? Of that one looks like it's all four. Let me see. This is... What? This is a level. Skyward game. Sword. Size and level. Skyward Sword. Has a lot of them. You upgrade your bombs four times, perhaps. Oh yeah, there's different levels. Mm-hmm. Big bomb bag, large bomb bag, the bomb shoes, phantom hourglass. Yep. Oh yeah. So That's the biggest change to bombs are in Breath of mm-hmm. the Wild. Okay. Because they're not as strong. 
They're really used for puzzles. If you use bombs against enemies in Breath of the Wild, they actually don't do too much, do they? And it's the first time that in Breath of the Breath of the Wild is the first time that um, the bombs are used as a like an elemental thing more than really a weapon, right? Because you don't actually collect them. You don't have no, to go get yeah. your bomb bag. They're just you can just make them materialize, and they're mm. also like mysteriously very very lightweight. So they will roll in the wind. They can get picked up by oh, a balloon. Oh yeah. Whereas most of the time a bomb is really heavy, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get you. First time that you have that they. That th- there was like more than one kind of bomb. Uh, you have the square bombs that can't roll and the rolly bombs yeah, that can roll. Yeah, I remember that. The square ones were kind of funny to me. I was like, how does that work? But I'll go with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, because if you think about bombs like in Ocarina, if you throw them, they don't actually mm-hmm. roll. They kind of just land and that's where they land. Yeah. I think in Ocarina, they might have like maybe one little bounce, but oh, it's yeah. not even a bounce. It's kind of like it's so heavy like a rock where it's just like, oof. It yeah. just makes that like, oof. Where you can literally bowl them like a bowling ball in Skyward mm-hmm. Sword. That's the first time we're really rolling bombs around, I think, like with physics. Which makes sense. They're round. <laughs> yep. And so by the time you hit Breath of the Wild, it's the yes, these roll. Oh, shoot. We have to make ones that don't roll. That don't roll. So they make the square. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, I think there's things like, there's some things like bows and arrows that are really so broad. There's the master sword and the actual um, oh, healing yeah. shield and all of that. But maybe we kind of, yeah. that might be a topic those might those are such iconic. Yeah, I had items. on my list um Triforce and Ooh. I had like swords but master sword, but they're such huge topics. Um and uh like with the master sword it wasn't really an evolution, more of like a change of how important it is in yeah. each game. And then with the Triforce, it's like at first I think only like Wiz like two of them is mentioned and then the third one comes in yep. so if those are those are like bigger topics for sure yeah the try we could do a triforce through the ages thing we kind of mm-hmm. did favorite triforces but that was really more about zelda the relationship between link zelda and ganon and stuff yeah um uh ultimately do you have a favorite item that you've always kind of looked towards that you've always enjoyed as you play through the games my favorite items are besides the hook shot. I always love the hook shot. I want a hook shot in real life. I'd be dangerous. <laughs> but also um the bow and arrow. The bow and arrows um is definitely like when I went to high school they had an archery class and I wanted to take it but the year I got in they discontinued that class. Oh, no. Like I would love to learn how to how to shoot a bow and arrow. Like to it would it just looks like fun and usually in um certain games I always lean towards an archer like in uh uh World of Warcraft, I yep. used to always be an archer. I just like that. And um, in Ocarina of Time, being able to ride a horse and, you know, do the the archery thing. That's, it's just, I always, I always love the bow and arrow. Yeah, that's cool. Also the safety of the distance when you're trying to defeat something and it's you know, powerful, you know. That's interesting. You had similar strategies with your boomerang when you'd spam it against. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like I'm to good over here. I'm fine. I'm good at a distance. Hey, look, if you're playing a game with me, I'm really good support from back there. I can heal you, but I could, I'll, like give me a bow and arrow and I'll kick butt. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. That's cool. I think I usually look forward to the hook shot as well. And mm-hmm. if there was an item I missed the most in Breath of the Wild, it might be the hook shot. Um, but I don't think I missed it too much because there's so many other cool things you can do yeah. in Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Well, Alyssa, this was wonderful. This was yes. a, this was a, a treat. Um, let's see here. We don't know exactly when you're coming back, but we know you are coming back because the schedule is not really coming together until after episode four. Right. But, uh, if you have any, (laughs) so I always just refer to you. Well, you're Alyssa Cat, aren't you? Like on social and stuff? Do you have any social you want to put out there? Yeah, my, um, my inst, I always look it up because I always say it wrong. (laughs) Um, because like on certain things I have to put the or a number at the end, but on Instagram, I'm ZeldaGirl90. That's where most people can go follow me and I post stuff about like Legend of Zelda all the time. Because you have quite the collection of stuff. (laughs) Yes, I do. I just upgraded it, which, um... I will going to be showing you some yeah? stuff that I yeah that I just got for sure. So wait, yeah. is it here with you? I got some things here and some things I'm going to show you. Um, that I haven't posted yet just because I knew like I wanted to show you first and then I'm going to post on to cool. my on my Instagram. Can yeah. you as we head out? Can you just show the camera at least what your laptop looks oh like? Oh my gosh! <laughs> so I'm going to describe this as we go. Alyssa came in with a it looks like a laptop or a Chromebook or something. <laughs> yeah. It's got it's got a ton of stickers on it from it is Legend of Zelda. Nothing but Legend of Zelda stickers. One, mm-hmm. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Okay, times so ten basically times four. There's there's there might be forty stickers on this laptop. And right there's here. still maybe forty more at home. If you want, <laughs> you know, I was just browsing Wish and it said Legend of Zelda stickers. What's <laughs> Wish? It's um, Sticker it's website? kind of like you get like off-brand items for really cheap, but it's kind of iffy because they kind of come from like China. <laughs> okay, so okay. you kind of so if you're looking for a, like a collectible here in this in in the states where it's usually two hundred dollars and it's on there for thirty, you know it's going to be a knockoff. Got it. You got know, it, I see. but this was like stickers, but if it's stickers for three cares? bucks, and they gave me like eighty, and they're all really good stickers. I love it. I think that's <laughs> awesome. I might I might indulge myself here and pick up some stickers. Very cool. Yeah, I'm afraid why not. <laughs> so Zelda Girl ninety people can find you there. Uh, mm-hmm. People can find me on Instagram at rap paint uh let's see here you can go to our website another zeldapodcast.com to check out some of our blog posts that people have been writing we just had a new writer come in uh mallory coon is one of our newest writers i think i'm saying her last name correctly k-u-h-n um yeah i think so um her i'm speaking with her and her husband about maybe getting them on a show or even more than a couple to be quite frank they live i think in michigan they're around the lake from us if if i understand correctly (laughs) and uh let's see you can go to our instagram another zelda podcast on instagram another zelda pod on twitter go to our facebook page you can also um check out all of our episodes on youtube which uh, we also have, a, we're starting to acquire a couple like little bonus episodes, like the, my little Let's Plays that I kind of did with the Zelda dungeons, which are still coming out. Palace mm-hmm. of Darkness comes out this Sunday as of the recording of this. Oh, cool. And um, this episode will come out about a week as from now from the recording of this. But, I, but do you know what? Honestly, Alyssa, full disclosure, yeah. um, our we had to reschedule because of my work thing that happened this past weekend. Yeah. And today is Wednesday. We are recording this on Wednesday. This yeah. is supposed to hit Patreon tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> so as you, oh, when boy. you head out, we'll record our bonus episode. And as you head mm-hmm. out, I am going to turn right around and start editing this thing all night long. And oh, I couldn't boy. be happier. Nothing would make me happier than working on that right now. <laughs> so that'll be a treat. And so this is going to be coming out within 24 hours I am for sending our you all the good vibes and energy to do this, dude. You got it. <laughs> it'll be great. It'll be great. So uh, with that said, thank you so much. And I don't think we have too much more to say. We, As we decided with Dan, we're having mm-hmm. whoever's opposite me do the yes. uh, do the outro so Alyssa I can't wait to see you again I can't wait to see you at some of these meetups I can't wait to see you in real life and uh, until the next time you're on the show I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to it I look forward to it too ready do it okay bye there it is there it is <laughs> fantastic thank you so much <laughs>